Back in the 80s, I made frequent trips from Minnesota to Connecticut to visit family. The drive, all interstate, is largely boring. So sometimes I get off the highway and drive secondary roads to meet real people and see the scenery, up close and personal. In early June 85, I decided to slow down and take three days to make the drive. On the third night, I drove a half mile into the forest on a dirt track, fixed a hot dinner on the camp stove, then unrolled my pad and sleeping bag and bedded down under the stars. There's a lot of beautiful country to see, and I had to see it. This was my cost-effective solution to low-budget travel. I did it every chance I got. It was comfortable and cozy. I read by headlamp for a while, then turned in. It was a beautiful, silent night. So quiet that in the middle of the night I woke, not sure what I had heard. Dark night punctuated by stars. No moon, inky black. Crack. A small stick snapped. Then another. More like a crackle. Slow movement. I don't spook easily. There's not much in the woods that will hurt you, so I tried to imagine what could be moving in a dark Pennsylvania wood in the middle of the night. It sounded big. Bigger than a fox. Bigger than a coyote. Moving quietly except for crackling footfalls in the forest duff. A deer? Could be. But they're shy. A moose? Were there moose in Pennsylvania? I wasn't sure. A bear? Sure, there are black bears in Pennsylvania. Black bears don't worry me much unless they get the smell of food up in their noses. Then they're a concern. It occurred to me then that I hadn't bothered to clean up after my dinner. Shit, that weighed on me now. Wide awake, I tuned my ears into a homing radar, trying to pick up a clue as to what could be walking out in the dark. Takes a lot of brass to move confidently through a forest at night. A human sneaking around. That could be a major problem. Animals are somewhat predictable. Humans are not. And some humans are dangerous. Fuck. But the clues didn't add up. Crackling sounds now came from both sides, left and right. Whatever was crunching through the forest was either gigantic, or there was more than one. It's not a moose. Moose are solitary this time of year. Damn it. Now the hairs were crawling up my neck. My head told me to forget all this and go back to sleep. It will all sort itself out in the morning. But my mind was now awake and spinning through more far-fetched possibilities. I didn't like the direction my thoughts were going. Sleep was definitely out of the question. Add to that a new sound. The forest now seemed to be alive. Faint creaking and groaning seemed to come from several directions, softly but unmistakable. The sound of bending wood, wood under stress creaking, groaning, but it made no sense. There was no wind to move the trees. What the fuck? Seriously? Middle of the night? Couldn't be good. In the middle of a dark night with thoroughly spooky sounds coming from all around and everywhere in a black forest, I assure you that it is seriously hard to pull yourself together. I considered switching on my headlamp, but did I really want to see what was out there? And if there were humans intent on causing trouble, it was better to not make myself a target. Better to maintain the element of surprise. So after another 20 minutes of my jacked brain listening to a groaning forest as snapping footfalls edged closer, there was finally a huge, loud, breathy exhale. It couldn't have been more than 50 feet away. That did it. Screw this. I threw in the towel and bailed to the car. Since sleep was out, I pulled out a book and read by the overhead dome light in the driver's seat. I grimly wondered what it would be like to disappear without a trace. After not arriving home for a day or two, my mother would raise the alarm, contact law enforcement, start a search. But I would be gone, without a trace, like I was never there. It did occur to me, despite my earlier cautionary thoughts on the subject, that sitting inside an amply lit car in the middle of a dark forest would make me a perfect target. I hate to admit it, but immersed in the dark on a thoroughly freaky night, I was kind of a mental wreck. Some unknown time later, barely visible in the weak light cast by the feeble dome light, a huge distorted yellow-orange face swam into view from out beyond the dark windshield. I simply jumped. Period. I'm sure I screamed a choice word. 
or three, and I'm sure I made a dent in the car roof from the impact with my head. I smashed on the headlights. Bovines. I was surrounded by a herd of black and white and brown motherfucking cows. I collapsed into the seat as the adrenaline siren wound down in my ears. That was the scariest thing that ever happened to me in the woods. I damn near lost my mind because of a herd of wayward cows. I live in Chattanooga. Every year we have a music festival called Riverbend on the Tennessee River. The end of the festival is celebrated with one of the best firework shows in the world. It is hell to get into or close to the festival on the last day. It's like everyone in the Southeast United States wants to come see the fireworks. My best friend Tara and I wanted to find a good vantage point that would overlook the river and watch the fireworks. We drove up a ridge near the river and pulled off into a gravel parking lot where we found several other people with the same idea as us. Some trees were in the way and we noticed a trail that went down the ridge. We walked about 40 yards down the trail and came to a clearing where we could see the river perfectly. We were talking and waiting on the fireworks to start when we started hearing some rustling noise down the trail. I thought I saw a person move between some trees down on the ridge. Tara had a small keychain flashlight and she took it out and shined it down the trail. We didn't see anything. We kept hearing rustling and kept seeing nothing. We finally started thinking it was a really noisy squirrel. The fireworks started and had been going on for about a minute when I heard a stick break right by me. We turned around and looked, but couldn't see anything. Tara turned on her light, and there was a man standing literally five feet away from me. It was so dark that we couldn't see him at all until the light was on him. It was like a horror movie scene. We immediately jumped up and started heading back up the trail. The whole way up he was talking, saying things like, where are you going, what's your name, what are two pretty things like you do here? We ignored him and kept walking. Then he started getting angry and saying, aren't you listening? You get back here. You know, nobody could hear your screams over the fireworks. I have a knife. You don't even know my name. Nobody will ever catch me if I hurt you. We started running, adrenaline kicking in. I looked back but wasn't sure how far he was behind us. It was too dark to see, but I could hear him. We got to the top of the hill where two kids were playing, and I saw their dad standing further back. I told the kids their dad wanted them so they would get close to their dad and be safe from the creepy guy. I then walked over to their dad and told him about the man that followed us out of the trail. We stood with him until the man was gone. The man stood at the beginning of the trail and watched us for a while, then finally went back into the woods. I think he had been watching us in the woods for at least 20 minutes before he approached us. He waited until the noise of the fireworks began before coming out to terrorize us. I was in college and taking a course in outdoor survival. The course ended with a three-day, three-night wilderness solo. We were allowed to take a backpack, empty canteen, sleeping bag, knife, six matches, rope, a sheet of plastic, a change of clothes, extra socks, halazone tablets, small cooking pot and spoon. We were not allowed to bring food or water since part of our training was in identifying edibles and finding a water source. Once I was dropped off, I had to hike in to find a spot to set up camp. First, I had to place a flag on a tree near my drop-off point so that I could be located three days later for pickup. I was loving life, just me and nature. I had no fears, even as night began to fall. I enjoyed the sounds of the woods all around me and didn't mind not having a tent. I built a small fire and had a great feeling of peace. I slept well that night, but woke up thirsty. My search for a water source began. Happily, I found a muddy stream, let the water settle in my pot, placed the tablets in the water, and boiled it for good measure. Yuck, what a crappy taste. But at least I was hydrated. All went well and I had a great time, until my last day. 
It was early afternoon on the last day and time to break camp. I cleaned up my camp area and hiked out to my drop-off spot. As I sat, leaning against a tree, I heard the sound of a vehicle off in the distance. I figured that it had to be my pickup. As I waited, a vehicle that I had never seen before pulled up on the dirt path in front of me. Immediately I realized that I didn't know the man who was driving. He gave me an odd look and my gut told me that he was bad news. He asked what I was doing out there and if I was alone. I said that my friends were behind me breaking camp but he gave me a knowing look, got back in his vehicle and rode off. I was terrified. I could tell he realized I was alone and I knew that I had to hide, and fast. I ran into the woods and hid. As I was running I heard the car come back. I stayed as quiet as I could and remained hidden. I heard him get out of the car and I could hear him calling to me while walking through the brush looking for me. I was so afraid he would find me. Eventually he gave up and I heard the car door slam, the engine started and the car pulled away. Going back to my drop-off point was not an option, so I began hiking through the woods, hoping I would find base camp. After walking for what felt like hours, I saw a forest ranger. I told him who I was and what had happened to me. He told me that I had done the right thing since a young woman had been attacked the night before and the police and forest services had been searching the area. He drove me to the base camp where I learned that another girl in my class had had a creepy encounter with a man the night before as well. She had scared him away by blowing a brass whistle until help arrived. If there is anything to be learned from this, it is being sure to always trust your gut feelings and never camp alone.